friends, today we are going to be creating snowflakes that have radial balance with cool colors, lines, and shapes. So here's one of my examples that was just done with markers. Here's another example that was just done with markers. Here's an example that was done with a marker watercolor painting technique, which I will teach you. Another one done with a marker watercolor painting technique. And one more done with that technique. All of them with radial balance, cool colors, lines, and shapes. First, let's talk real quick about what radial balance is. And you will not need to write this down. This is just for you to watch. There are three types of main types of balance in art, and those are symmetrical, which a lot of you have learned about symmetry in class. Then there's asymmetrical. And then there is radial, and that's the one we are going to be working with today. So symmetrical, a lot of you have learned about uh, symmetrical balance in class or symmetry. Symmetrical balance in an artwork is when the artwork is the same on both sides. So if I'm trying to draw a butterfly, maybe some clouds in the sky, it's going to be the same on both sides. So if I divide my canvas or my paper in half, same, same on both sides. Asymmetrical balance there is balance in the artwork, so there might be objects or shapes on this side of the artwork and objects and shapes on this side of the artwork. But if I divide it in half, it's not the same. But there is an, about an equal amount on both sides, so it's balanced out. Radial balance is when you have all the elements, so lines, shapes, or colors, coming from the middle point. So everything in the artwork is coming towards or from that middle point, and that is radial balance. So that's what we're gonna be working with today. You can see in our snowflakes how everything looks like it's coming in towards the middle. All our lines and shapes are going in towards that middle point for like a starburst effect in the snowflake. First step is you're gonna find something round to trace. I just traced a small bowl, so you would want to do that with pencil so you don't get marker all over the object that you're tracing, but you're going to find something small to trace, okay? So just a regular size soup bowl would be fine, a lid to a coffee can, so find something to trace and cut out a circle. You're going to want to pause the video until you have your circle cut, okay? After you get your circle cut, your first step is to, so you're gonna unpause the video once you get your circle cut. When you're ready to move on, you're going to fold your circle in half, like this, increase it really well, then fold it in half again. Like this, and fold it in half one more time. So it looks like a little piece of pizza or a little pie piece. Okay, then you're gonna open it up and you're gonna have eight triangles going in towards the middle. So we have shapes already. We have circle and triangles. Now, I'm gonna start off by just doing a marker one. You could also do this with color pencils or crayons or any type of media you have at home. But we're just gonna start off by doing some line designs. So first we're gonna trace the triangular shapes. And you want to use cool colors for this. Our cool colors are blue, purple, and green. Remember that we've learned those in class and they're the colors that look cold. And when we learn them in class, we look at them and we go, brr, cold. And then when we look at the warm colors, we say, woo, hot. And you guys have been doing that with me since you're a little bitty kindergarten friends. So we probably remember our cool colors and our warm colors. If you're a new friend or a kindergarten friend that hasn't had a chance to have me much in class, a cool color is blue, purple, and green, and they look cold. So we traced our triangles, so we have our shapes laid in. Now we're going to start doing 
some line designs from the center. So I'm gonna to switch to purple just so I have a little bit of contrast. So a little bit of something different. And I'm going to start in the center here and I'm going to do lines coming out from the center. Remember in radial balance, things look like they're coming in or coming from the center. Now this is the fun part. After you kind of get the basic shape of the snowflake of the circle and then the starburst where we're tracing the triangles and then the starburst from the center, this is when you can add your own designs. In this one, I added triangles on the end of each of the lines, on four of the lines and circles on the other four lines. In this one, I did circles on all of them and notice I added a little bit of green in this one to add that third cool color. But then I did circular patterns in this one, straight lines in this one. So I'm gonna switch back to blue. I think I'm just gonna keep this one blue and purple instead of adding some green, but you can add some green if you want. And I'm going to put circles on these two, diamonds on these two, and then I think on these two, I'm gonna do diamonds. And these two, I'm gonna do circles. You add any designs you want. Then I'm gonna do some V shapes to look like little frozen fractals on these lines. It's something very simple to do, but adds a little bit more fanciness to it, just from a simple line design. And I'm gonna go through and add little circles on the end of each of those little frozen fractals to make it even more fancy. All I'm using is simple lines and simple shapes. Two elements of art. Gotta have those elements of art. Can't even draw a stick man without circles and shapes, can we guys? And I like the look of those frozen fractals, so on the diamond ones, I'm gonna add an extra. Then I could add any type of designs I wanted. I could go back in the background. I could color these uh, circles and diamonds in purple, blue, or green. I could go in and add lines or stripes or repeated patterns in the background. In this one, I did diagonal lines out to kind of emphasize those little frozen fractals that we drew with the V shapes. So you decide how you want to do it. Now, if you are interested in learning how to do this technique, you might want to pause your video and cut another circle. And I'm gonna show you how to do this marker watercolor technique. Now you do not need watercolors for this technique. All you need is washable markers, okay? Like Crayola, Crazy Art, any washable markers. Sharpies will not work. And you're gonna need a cup of water and you're gonna need a paintbrush, okay? So, Go ahead and pause to cut another circle if you want to try this. And unpause when you get it ready. All right, and remember to pause me anytime I'm going too fast. If you're gonna do this technique with me, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by doing the same thing we did with the first one. We're gonna fold it in half. Fold it in half again. it's getting creased because you want to have those lines to trace and then fold it in half one more time so it looks like a little pizza piece or a little piece of pie and crease it really good when you open it you're gonna have eight sections one two three four five six seven eight now for this one we are going to be using markers as paint so I'm gonna use blue and purple again, two of my cool colors. And I'm going to want to put plenty of ink down on this paper. So I'm gonna trace this really well and put plenty of ink down. I want a big wide ink line. So I'm gonna trace this triangle and get a big wide ink line, put plenty of ink down. We're not being dainty with our ink here. Now I'm gonna turn, I'm gonna do another ink line and I'm just gonna do half this snowflake so you can see the steps without having to watch me do the whole thing. All right, 
and I'm going to trace, let's see, the other two purple. So you would continue to do this all the way around with wide lines, all the way around the snowflake, really doing wide lines with your marker. Turn that marker over on its side and using the broad side to really give it a wide line. Okay, so I got lots of ink on there. Notice I have a piece of paper underneath my snowflake. You want to do that before you start with the water because we do not want to get water and marker bled all over mom and dad's dining room table or grandma and grandpa's table or wherever you're at. We do not want to get marker bled all over. So make sure you have a piece of paper, maybe even two underneath this before we start the next step. But we are going to pretend I've went all the way around. You can even take a white crayon and draw some lines in here or some shapes in here to give it some details. I'm just gonna do a line and a polka dot, line and a polka dot. Now, crayons are made out of wax and wax and water won't stick together. So this is called a resist, so they resist each other. So I have just folded my circle into eight sections, traced, let's pretend the whole thing's done, traced each section with a broad band of marker and I added some little crayon details. Next, you're gonna take some water and a paintbrush. Make sure that you've covered your table first. And then you're just going to wet the marker. These markers are water-based, which means when we get them wet, it's gonna activate that ink and it's going to cause it to kind of smudge around from the water and it's like making a little homemade paint here. So you don't need your watercolor set in order to paint. And look, now that I've activated that ink, you can see where I drew the little white line to make my detail. Now I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to activate the ink. I notice I rinsed out my brush before I switched over to the blue. I'm going to get that ink, that broad band of marker wet, and paint with the watered down ink here. Next section. Get that good and wet. Get that good and wet. And then it's going to make some ink that on my brush that I can paint with. And again. Now you can go over this again in a minute uh, to make it even a little bit more dark. I used a pretty thin piece of paper, so I don't want to go over it too much, too fast, because it might make my paper rip. But you can see, I went over this one twice, and you can still see a little bit of the uh, dark outlining from where I had originally drawn the marker lines. But you can tell it definitely looks like it's been painted with watercolors, and all I needed were some washable markers white crayons nice if you have one to do some lines and a paintbrush and some water don't forget to cover your table i hope you had fun whether you did the marker technique or whether you just drew a detailed radial design with your markers or your crayons i would love to see them if you made one bye guys